All right, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Andy McRae, and this is my colleague, uh, Jeff Young. Uh, we work at Red Hat as software engineers on the multi-arc team. Um, our primary focus is to deliver OpenShift Container Platform, um, so otherwise known as OCP, on power. Uh, but we also do manual builds uh, of S390X and ARCH64 uh, for OCP. Um, and this is specifically uh, for the Red Hat build system, which uses uh, OSBS, or the OpenShift build service. Uh, we've been very strongly focused downstream um, due to time constraints and, and kind of necessity um, to, to get things delivered for power for OpenShift in the three series. But this has caused us a bunch of uh, challenges, and we thought there had to be a better solution to that. So, uh, like Andy was saying, by... Uh, by mid last year, our team had been uh, working on OCP 310, which uh, GA'd on power last October. We were uh, building OCP 310 on power, uh, delivering IBM beta drops during this time. Um, we had also built uh, 3.9 for ARM and S390 for the OpenShift build service to use. And we validated all that work. We have a designated multi arts QE team that validates all of our downstream work. And, and really, at that time, there wasn't any real issues compiling from one arch to the other. Everything was Rails 7 based. Uh, Rails 7 worked uh, on those architectures. So there wasn't like this immediate need to say, hey, I need some CI upstream to check everything first. Because it really, just for 3.9 and 3.10 at least, it mostly worked. <clears throat> uh, and that was until OpenShift 3.11 came along. Um, with 3.11, there obviously were a lot more containers that kind of existed outside of the OpenShift space, things like Prometheus, Grafana, um, admin console, things like that. And it also introduced uh, multi-stage builds. So up to this point, we had kind of been using, you know, like Docker pull uh, or Docker to build all of our things. Um, and that worked pretty well. And then when multi-stage showed up, we started noticing as part of that process, you know, you, you build, and you have an output file, and, and that, that output path oftentimes would be a hard-coded AMD64 path in the Docker file, right? So we had to find a way to vet those out. Those started showing up. And because we were doing everything downstream, it was really cumbersome to, to fix that downstream, test it downstream, and then put it back into upstream so it could be consumed properly, right? Um, you know, when we did 3.9 and 3.10, we had one or two of those things, and it really wasn't a big deal. But when 3.11 hit, it, it started happening more and more and more, and we were breaking downstream builds as a process. Or, and, and that's a problem, because we were holding up x86. Um, it was also during this time that Fedora CI reached out to us and said, hey, we would like to, do, uh, we would like to use upstream OpenShift for our OSBS container builds. Can you help us uh, take upstream OpenShift and put it on S390, Power, R, and x86. <clears throat> so what was really stopping us from just going upstream and turning on other architectures? You can't you know, just cross-compile a container like you can an RPM, right? You really need native hardware to build these Docker files under these containers on. And Internally to Red Hat, we use a system called Beaker that has all the architectures we need to build on. But OpenShift Upstream CI lives kind of in Amazon and, and Google and in, a, in clouds, right? And there, we, we really tried to investigate a way to just connect the two. You know, we really wanted Upstream CI just to call our Beaker machines and say, hey, build, compile, let's this, make this part of your CI test. But there really wasn't a good way to do it. I'm not saying it wasn't impossible to do, but it would have taken quite a bit of effort on the OpenShift side to do it. And you know, we had just acquired CoreOS. You know, OpenShift 4.0 was really the priority. So the multi-arch work upstream, at least, became deprioritized so they could get 4.0 out the door. So we were kind of stuck, right? Additionally, the other problem was OpenShift upstream is built off CentOS 7 containers. And as some of you may know, CentOS 7 doesn't support S390. It's just not built for it. So we had a couple problems we needed to work around. And our workaround, uh, I guess the first decision we made is, like, hey, you know, we have to support S390. Fedora supports S390. Why don't we rewrite all the Docker files to support Fedora builds? Um, 
and that really ends up being a lot of Docker files, it turns out. Um, but we didn't want to maintain forks of every single OpenShift repo with just like one Docker file difference. And we knew we didn't quite have the buy-in to put all those Fedora-based Docker files back in the upstream, because honestly, Andy and I were the only ones using this at the time. Um, so instead, what we did is we, we basically just cataloged all the uh, upstream repos needed to, to do a full build of OpenShift. And that's not just the OpenShift origin repo. That's things like etcd, image the image registry, web console, cockpit, things like that. And we wrote a script that would basically, you could run on your machine, your local machine that had Fedora 29 on it. It would put all those repos in slash temp. It would inject all of our Docker files, essentially replacing the CentOS 7 versions of those Docker files. And we would run local builds in the right order to basically produce all the containers needed to do a full install of OpenShift on your local machine. Um, obviously, we have to rename the containers so we don't have a collision with the upstream container names. So additionally, we, we put some sample uh, inventory files that uh, OpenShift Ansible can use to consume the containers we make and do like an all-in-one install. And that saves us a lot of time because now we can just go clone this repo, run it on a Fedora 29 machine that has Docker installed, say, make OKD 3.11, and it will build whatever architecture you're on. It's the same experience across all four arcs, which is very, very good for us. It helps us a lot in, in troubleshooting all the little issues that we see downstream before they get downstream. <clears throat> um, additionally, in this repo, we have um, we wrapped some shell scripts around the conformance test so we could at least validate the containers we build. And we also um, have the ability, and we have some instructions that say, hey, you know, if I build x86, power and arm, I'll, maybe I want to push those to my private uh, Docker hub or uh, container registry and manifest list them so I can reconsume them in a, in a predictable way, I guess. Um, so this is really a temporary workaround that we wanted to share with you guys. It's, it's a really easy way for a developer who's interested in getting started with multi-arch on OpenShift to just kind of have a place, the one place to go to know everything that needs to be involved to pull down and build and, and to do a little bit of testing. And it also gave us the ability to bootstrap Fedora's uh, CI OSBS process. And, and again, this was all just for 3.11. Um, 4.0 changed some things for us. <laughs> And uh, Andy's going to talk about that next. Um, cool. Yeah, so as uh, Jeff said, th what we've done so far is we really want to stress is just a, a workaround. You wouldn't deploy this as a, pro a product. You wouldn't. It's not supposed to be a distribution of OpenShift or anything like that. It really is just a collection of scripts that we had already um, and that we were using regularly. So with 4.0 coming, like, a lot of things are changing. And the timelines have been tight for the OpenShift team, understandably. Um, they've been you know, working flat out, and uh, they've got a lot, of, lot to get done. Um, so multi arc isn't really a priority for them. And in an ideal world, what we'd love to see is a situation where an event that would trigger a build, so for example, a pull request or a release, uh, would build multi arc containers um, in the same way as the current x86-64 containers are built for CentOS. Um, and, and this would be a complete ideal uh, way to do it. Now, it's not possible right now. Um, one of the things Jeff mentioned would be the problem we have uh, with it just being AWS for, for the CI. Um, so the builds all happen on AWS, and there's not too much we can do right now to change that. It's not something that's impossible to change, but um, you know, that's a much longer term kind of goal. A more realistic goal for us in the shorter term would be to put the build files we have now um, for the Fedora containers into upstream. And that way we could kind of get rid of the repository that we have created um, and, and have everything done in a single location or in the same location that you would do it for x86-64, which would be great because it would mean that you could go in and the builds will be treated the exact same way as the x86-64 builds are treated now. Um, there'll be downsides, which is that they're not tested properly um, and the work gone into them isn't, isn't as high, but um, at least it's a good starting point. And on that note, um, another thing we'd like to see in, in the short term is some lint tests for multi-arc. Um, Jeff mentioned that there's some pretty common issues we run into uh, where people have essentially hard-coded paths with uh, the architecture in them. 
So that really gives no benefit to even the x86-64 containers. It's, it's kind of just a, a thing that happens when you don't consider multi-arc. Um, and, and there's really easy ways to avoid that. Um, and so by just having a simple lint test that would check for these common issues we found, uh, we can re hopefully reduce the amount of failures we see for multi-arc builds and ensure that pull requests going into the repositories are not going to inf enforce an x86-64 architecture um, and hopefully that'll result in you know, more successful builds for us. Um, and as time goes, of course, as we find more use cases, we can add those to the lint test. Um, we'd also like to see full, uh, like f the tests that are run on the x86-64 containers right now, we'd love to see a full uh, run against the multi-arc containers. We do run tests against them. Um, at the moment, we run all the Kubernetes tests and a subset of the OpenShift tests. Um, and the reason we don't run all of them is because a couple of the containers that are used for testing OpenShift aren't built on multi-arc, so we just can't use them right now. Um, but it would be great to see uh, like all the tests running against multi-arc um, the same way they do x86-64 and seeing them pass and succeed. Uh, now, as we've, we've said, like we've, we've put a focus on downstream in, in the three series. Uh, we'd like that to change uh, moving forward. Uh, we think there's a, a great amount of benefit we can get from pushing changes upstream first, seeing the issues quicker, fixing them upstream, and then inheriting them downstream, which is kind of the whole principle of, of doing things upstream in the first place. I mean, we think we could really gain a lot from doing that. Um, in the last cycles, we were very much trailing behind. So whatever happened in the OpenShift team, uh, we had to then kind of scramble to, to get um, and scramble to get it working on power. And it would sometimes be a couple of weeks, a month, maybe more after the actual release um, within OpenShift. So you could get OpenShift version 3.10, for example, and maybe a month or two later, you can then get it on, on power. Um, which is really not an ideal situation. And um, we'd love to be able to see the issues coming, uh, fix them, and then hopefully release very much closer to um, the actual release points. <laughs> um, <laughs> you changed that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so, we, uh, so Jeff had the link to the repository uh, before, um, but there it is again. Um, again, not a distribution, it's just a collection of scripts, but it will work straight out the box. Uh, you can essentially just uh, clone the repo. Um, there's some pretty simplistic readme files in there, and you can run some scripts um, to get it going. I would recommend, if you're interested, um, you know, we're, we're definitely keen for people to try it out. I would recommend starting with um, x86-64 builds on Fedora. It's, it's just a really nice way to compare what we know works on SensorOS 7 and that everyone's using to something built on Fedora. And from there, move on to build uh, another architecture, whatever takes your fancy, um, and, and see how that goes. And if you find any issues or you'd like to make pull requests, you please go ahead. Um, we will be monitoring that. And yeah. we plan to add um, <coughs> the OpenShift 4 containers uh, capability for OpenShift 4 at some point uh, when, when it's available. Yeah, so like the big change for OpenShift 4, obviously, is uh, the core OS install, sorry. Oh, yeah. The big change is the 4OS, uh, 4OS, core OS um, operating system. And so that's, that's the first thing we'll tackle first, uh, Fedora core OS, get that multi arch and then we'll circle back and do the containers after. Um, that's it? Um, yeah, I think that's it. So if there are any questions. Colin. Yep. And now with the release payload, it's like there's that one container that points to all the other containers, um, which is generated by the combination of the CI operator upstream and the release controller. Um, and yeah, so yeah, there's a whole lot going on here. But you know, so using Fedora, wiring Fedora infrastructure and like the powerful C64 S390 hardware into this, like that seems plausible because that means you don't have to cross files okay. and stuff like that. Uh, and as far as like. Yeah, so every pull request to an OpenShift repo will spin up a cluster. And actually, until recently, in one of our repos, you can change the readme ID, like spun up a multi-master cluster, <laughs> right? And there's a lot of, so that's just not gonna, like, our CI depends on elastic scaling, but there's actually another step before 
So you have CI of the upstream, the containers are generated, and then there's a final integration test of a release payload. And that's one where it would make sense, I think, yeah. to hook in multi-arch, because that there's only like a couple of those an hour. So clearly, you know, I think we could scale out tests there, and that would where it would probably make sense to yeah, have the CI operator, I guess, call out to OSBS or something. Yeah, so this is a conversation that was hard to have uh, seven months ago, right? There was a lot going on then, and there's still a lot going on with four. So I, this is just to get us through this dark time, if you will, for multi-arch. So when, when OpenShift is, is more or less ready for upstream for us, we can just hand them th something, and we have some ideas. We know it'll work, and the only work that has to be done is the automation. Yeah. The, I guess just the highest level thing I would say is the yeah. Yeah. Those can be done in parallel. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's talk uh, after. Any more questions? Okay. Cool. Um, you miss thank you, everyone. Thanks for all the arches in our presentation. <laughs> <laughs>